Another beautiful morning out. How you doing, Steve? I am sure you are ready to be back out in your wilderness home and not in a box inside of mine. So last night we had ourselves a uh, little home invasion, but I was able to capture and subdue the subject and uh, he's now my captive. So this little guy right here, Steve the Mouse, was running around in the back of the van last night, all over the place, back up that back net, he ran across my legs, he was on my desk, he crawled down my chair, he was all over the floor and I couldn't deal with it, so I had an extra one of these little sticky traps that I put some peanut butter on, sitting down in my cabinet, so I set that out and uh, the little guy took the bait. And once he was on there, it was pretty much game over for him because those things are made of some of the stickiest substance ever made on earth. So I was still awake when he got caught on there initially last night and after he got caught, I kind of started to feel bad about him being stuck on there and just kind of starving to death all night. So I went online and I Googled how to get a mouse off of a sticky trap. And the only way to do it is if you coat them in oil. But I had to pour a ton of olive oil on the guy to get him to come free from the uh, sticky board. And he eventually did. He wriggled himself free after being coated in oil. And then I put him in that little container and most of the uh, oil went with him. So I stuffed in a little peanut butter snack for him up in the corner. And also threw a few paper towels in there so he had somewhere dry to sit for the night at least. But we're going to be letting the little guy go. Uh, I just don't want to let him go until I am ready to leave so that he doesn't come back in. So he's gonna have to stay there and watch me cook breakfast. So after I made breakfast, my plan was I was gonna hang out here and take a shower and then hit the road. But I forgot that we are only 15 minutes down the road from the Lillard Hot Springs, which is this naturally occurring geothermal hot pool surrounded by a bunch of warm swamp area because it's the only spring, I think, in North America that doesn't drain into a larger body of water. And it's supposed to be pretty cool because it creates this like swampy, warm micro ecosystem in a place that has some of the harshest winters in the world. So definitely very excited to go check that out. Gotta shave this beard off. Can't take it anymore. Here we go. Hopefully that's good enough. Now we've only got one thing to do before we can let Mr. Mousy go and get out of here. And that is put Starlink away. There we go. We are all cleaned up, ready to go. Hit the road again and check out some hot springs. But it is now time to say goodbye to our little mousy friend, our oil-coated mousy friend. Last night when I was kind of walking around, I walked down here to this freshwater spring. And if you watched my last video, I actually had mentioned that this water is stagnant or was stagnant. It is in fact not stagnant, it is moving. It looks like it filters through the sediment over on this side, runs around this little bend right here, and then comes out on the other side, there's like a little waterfall. We're gonna go let our little mousy friend free in this meadow next to this fresh spring. Make sure he's far enough away from the van that he's not gonna come back by the time I get back there. Hopefully the little guy lives a good life away from other vans because I don't know if other vans will be as nice as me. Also, when I came out here yesterday, saw some big old moose tracks coming through here. Probably a big watering hole for a bunch of different animals. That is like a gigantic footprint. Anyways, this is that little spring that comes out and kind of cascades back into the river through this little waterfall. Pretty cool. But it is time to say goodbye to our oily little friend. There you go, buddy, you're free. Go, look at him go. All right, let's get back to the van before he does. And I know a lot of you are gonna say, it's just a mouse. Why didn't you let it die? Why didn't you keep it on the glue board? Technically, I am the one who invaded his home first, so it wouldn't feel right just to kill him for trying to invade mine. So maybe he'll die out there later today, or maybe he's gonna live a long and prosperous life. I just didn't really feel like being the one to make that decision, so we'll let a bird or a fox or whatever else make that decision for him. Also, another fun little van life tidbit before we get out of here. A lot of you guys ask, how do I go to the bathroom in places like this, where there's a water source nearby, so I can't really go off and dig a hole unless I Crossed the road all the way over there and dug one. And there's no bathrooms anywhere at this rest stop, so sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and then carry it with you till you find a trash can. That will definitely be our first stop of the day. Really like that spot. I'm actually gonna miss it. We shouldn't be too far from the hot springs, but if we can, before we get there, I'm gonna try to find a trash can. Got a little roadblock of a Heard a bicy coming up here, but he's just strolling across the road. Is 
Very cool. There should be a trash can in here. Yeah, there is. I don't know if this is it, but... Where the uh, hot springs are, or are they further down? It is where the hot springs are. It is indeed where the hot springs are. But it's also a massive, very, very well-developed campground. Trail to hot spring, day use, and parking. Ah, uh, there's not too many people here, that's good. We made it. Let's go check out some hot springs. Got my bathing suit, got my towel, ready to go. Just kidding. So these kind of hot swamps are what you gotta walk through to get the actual soaking pool. And this swamp is actually fed by that pool, so it's a higher temperature than most of the water in the area, which makes for a very unique looking landscape. Pretty cool. And this little guy is just running right along with me and squeaking the whole way. Don't know what his deal is. The hot water Vaisla, the tiny freshwater snail that's only found in one place in the entire world in this swamp. Pretty interesting. That's a pretty cool fact, but how do you honestly verify that? Like, is our log of all of the animal species in the world that complete that they know that the only place that that little snail exists is right here? I don't know if I buy it, but it's still cool nonetheless. There we go. This is it. So I think in some areas it is hotter than it is in others, but we're gonna get in and find out. we will try up here in this uh, top pool first. Whew. It feels crazy, like walking on a riverbed. And it's like the perfect blend of man-made versus natural. You got some fresh springs coming in from right there, but they've got this nice platform that you can walk in on. And then it's just mud and rocks on the bottom. So it is definitely much, much hotter over here. It's almost painfully hot. That water over there is legitimately boiling. So hot over in this area, but it is very beautiful out here. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. It's so cool back here. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. It's so crazy. Like, I thought it was going to be just kind of like a tub. It's kind of wild how natural it actually is. I don't know if they dug this out themselves or if this was already here, but it's it's legitimately just mud and plant matter around the entirety of the outside of this place. Oh, Pretty cool, though. There's this creepy little path you can go down and explore. <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's only cold by my feet, though. It's so weird. Oh, it's like it ends out in a ice-cold little... Waterfall, and I guess if you wanted to, you could go up there, but yeah, pretty neat. Just kind of back here in the middle of nowhere, in my own little jungle hut. It's kind of cold back here. I don't really like it. I'm gonna head back into the warmer waters, up to the front. This must have been one of the most amazing things to stumble upon back in the day. Imagine backpacking across Alaska in the middle of the winter, and then you come across this expanse of steaming hot water. It must have been so cool. There's also logs floating around you can kind of use to hang on to. This is a little floaty. It's pretty cool. I feel like a uh, jungle man floating on my log. Very nice. Nice natural bath. All right, we have been here for just about an hour. Feels very good. It's very warm, but we do have a lot of driving we got to do today, so I think it's time to get out of here. So I was actually mistaken. They don't have showers here, and there is a very strong smell of sulfur coming from that water. So I think I definitely will have to rinse myself off when I get back to the van or else I'm not gonna feel the best. Much better. I really wish I had remembered to grab my towel before I did that. All right, so now that we're done with that, I'm gonna get myself changed on today's agenda. I think that uh, based on the ingredients that I have in my pantry, I think tonight I'm gonna make myself a pizza from scratch because I think I should have all the ingredients. But before we can do that, we are still on the Alaskan highway and we do still have a long, long ways to go. So I think for today, I'm gonna try to get six hours of driving in. It is currently 12 o'clock, 12.30. We're gonna drive till right around six o'clock or 6.30, find somewhere to camp in the woods and cook some dinner. So onward. And hopefully today we're gonna make it up into the Yukon. At least that's the plan. Alright, we have made it to our first stop of the day. 
of Watson Lake. So we're grabbing some gas and then gonna check out some of the spots in this town before we head out. Also on the uh, Alaskan Highway, not all gas stations are built the same. Some of them <laughs> I truly don't know how to use, but I think you just gotta go inside and pay. So that's what we'll do. Um, do you just, do you pump it first and then pay or? Yeah, go ahead, fuel up, come on in when you're done. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. fill up first, come back in and then. Yeah. Do okay. that if you want. Thank you. All right, so I guess it's just a trust system. I don't know what the difference between the two is, though. I'm guessing they're the same. I don't know. Lift the lever to start the pump. It's not really uh, working the best here. There we go. Got to hold it in the right position, <laughs> and then it starts to fill. There we go. So this town actually hosts one of the most famous stops along the Alaskan Highway, and that is the Signpost Forest, which is a... I mean, there's no better way to put it. It's a forest of signposts that was started back in 1942 when the Alaskan Highway was built by a U.S. soldier named Carl K. Lindsay, who his job was to go around and fix signposts. And uh, one day he was feeling homesick, so he put up a sign with the distance to his hometown on it. Since then, it's grown into this massive signpost forest where people come and put their own signposts. And then it's uh, maintained by the town. And there's new installations and new things added to it all the time. So it'll be interesting to go stop by. Check it out. You can kind of already see it down there at the end of the road. All those different signposts. This thing is so much more massive than I thought it was. There are so many signposts. I should have brought a sign myself to hang up. Add it somewhere to the city. It's a little bit cold out. I'm gonna put a jacket on. So I actually didn't know this was here until I got on the road, so that's why I don't have my own sign. But maybe I'll find something to hang up. It is a pretty interesting story though, that it started by one guy who was homesick and made a signpost for the distance to his house. And now all these people have done the same thing. So, I mean, there are signs from all over. Washington, Switzerland, Colorado, Illinois, Pennsylvania. There's one from the UK. Maybe I'll put my license plate up here, just cause. Tons of signs. This is only a section of it. They're from all over the place too. Different countries. Oh look, someone else started. Mile Zero Key West. Uh, okay, I've been looking around for like 10 minutes trying to find something that I can hang up in the in the forest and I forgot when I went to Ireland I got one of these little European hats But that's not what I'm hanging up. What I'm gonna hang up is on the back. It's actually my family crest It's our pin. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that but it says up at the top there It says to me and then there's a black ship and a red line So I'm gonna go pound this into a post somewhere. So if you ever come to the signpost forest see this Maryland tag since I'm from Maryland I'm gonna put it right above that. So if anyone comes to this forest and finds that, tag me in it. <laughs> All right, so although I do normally like uh, making my own meals when I'm on the road, sometimes when I'm in smaller towns like this, I like to just stop in somewhere and see what they got. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that one right there. Golden nugget. Get some Chinese food. Hello. That's what Chinese food in the Yukon looks like. Let's give it a try. All right, just finished up lunch at the Nugget restaurant. Getting back on the road, we got yet another two and a half hour drive before we get to our campsite. So let's hit the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Making music, something, something, something with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Pull down this road and see. Oh yeah, this is definitely a spot we can stay. Now, I don't know how far down towards the river we can go, but that is something that I'm gonna send the drone up to figure out. Let's see if there's any campsites down this road. So it looks like it just ends Oh, that's so sick. Looks like it just ends in a campsite right on the water, so we will definitely be pulling down there. So as long as the road doesn't get too bad down here, definitely gonna be pulling all the way down there by that river. Definitely looks easily passable though. 
couple big bumps. Definitely bottomed out there a little bit, but look at this campsite, right on the water. Very nice. Hopefully there's not too many mosquitoes here. So I'm not sure if that standing water over there is gonna be cause for concern with mosquitoes, but got our own little private beach here. Not too shabby. Ooh. That is some cold water. Now that we've got our beautiful campsite on the river here, I think it's time to make some pizza. But actually, before I make the pizza, I'm gonna set up Starlink, but if you've been watching my channel, you guys already know how that goes by now, so I won't take you with me. So last time I made a pizza, it turned out all right, but I think I could have done better. So this time I've got some specialty pizza flour and some yeast, and we're gonna try to do it the right way. But I can't speak for how well this oven's gonna bake the pizza because it bakes right. only from the bottom, not from the top like you're supposed to with a pizza. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. But also, cool thing I got before I came out here that I haven't used yet is this like foldable origami bowl. And we're gonna use it today. So like, I forget how it works, but basically like fold it into a bowl somehow like this. Like pops together with these little pins. And it's nice because I have held off on getting like a big bowl like this for so long because of like how much space this takes up. But having something that folds flat, pretty nice. But first we'll take this flour, empty it out into our bowl. And then we will take our yeast, add that into the bowl. And then we actually need one and one fourth cup of lukewarm water to kind of activate that yeast. So I am just going to use my electric kettle and like halfway warm up some water. And I think we need one and a fourth cups for it. All right, now we'll heat this up for like maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds. There we go, that should be good enough. And we can pour that over that. Oh, that's perfectly lukewarm. And then we'll just stir this with a fork until the dough forms and mush it up into a bowl. I'm not gonna lie, very happy with this bowl purchase. And now we just knead this down until it's a nice smooth ball of dough. All right, I think we've got our ball of dough. And now we just need to lightly oil this bowl, stick the dough in there, cover it with some plastic wrap, and then let it rise for about 30 minutes and it should be done. We're looking for it to be just about double that size. I don't know if this bowl is big enough, but I guess we'll see. And just like that, our dough has doubled in size. Oh. <laughs> see, now this is a correctly made pizza dough. Last time, I don't think I made it too correctly. This one looks a lot better, feels a lot better. So I think we're gonna make two thin crust whatever size pizzas these are. So I think I would need about a fourth of this big piece for each of those pies. There we go, we got the pizza. Also, fun fact, I'm actually pretty good at juggling. I can even do tricks. Ooh. All right. Make some pizzas. And I'm gonna save this for something else. Maybe we can make something cool out of this dough. So before we start stretching these out and get them ready, I don't have any pizza sauce, so we're gonna also have to make that from scratch as well. And the only thing I really have that comes close to being a pizza sauce is I've got these whole peeled tomatoes. So I'm just gonna take these, throw a bunch of spices into a blender and call that a pizza sauce. Tomatoes. And then some basil, oregano, garlic powder, some garlic puree, and just a little bit of basil paste. Top that off, blender up. There we go. That is our delicious looking pizza sauce. And now we're ready to make some pizza. All right, first things first, get some flour down. Get that formed into a nice ball. Also, I said this in my last video, I used to work as a pizza chef in a pizza restaurant. Let's see how we do. All right, that should be good enough. One to go, there we go, two done. Now let's wipe up all this flour before we do anything else. So honestly, the toppings are really up to you, but if you don't like pineapple on pizza, you're wrong, and that's not an opinion, that's just a fact. Hang on, before I do this, I should probably spray these down with some Pam. 
So I think for a recipe later this week, I'm gonna look up something cool you can make with pizza dough since I have that other half left and see if we can make something cool. Maybe a calzone. I could make a calzone or a stromboli or something like that. We'll see. I do have a ton of extra pizza sauce though. Get both of those with some pizza cheeses. Hit them with your favorite toppings. Me, bacon, pineapple. And honestly, I think if you don't like pineapple on your pizzas, maybe it's just a portion thing because for me, I think 90% of restaurants get it wrong because they do the pineapple slices like way too big and it's a bit overwhelming. But if you get them all nice and finely chopped to the same size, it's a very pleasant pizza eating experience. But I've only found a few restaurants that actually cut the pineapples down to the right size. But bacon pineapple pizzas are the king of pizzas, in my opinion. Throw another extra sprinkle of cheese on top of those. Not too much though. And that is a beautiful pizza. Hopefully the oven doesn't destroy them. But now we gotta wait like 15 minutes for the oven to preheat because I forgot to do that and I just turned it on. All right, I think the oven should be hot enough. Go ahead and pop these bad boys in there. Hopefully they cook up nice and evenly. And now we wait. Also, I kind of realized after I started making the uh, pizzas at this spot that there is absolutely no way that I'm gonna be able to turn this van around in this spot. I mean, I could technically try to pull it up through this, but I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's like very uneven ground right here. And I just don't feel like pulling over that and getting myself bottomed out anywhere. And there's just, there's just not enough room over here to pull up and then turn. I mean, maybe there is, but I think I'm just gonna have to end up backing all the way back out. So I'm kind of glad this didn't go back too far because that shouldn't be too hard to back all the way down. It's really not that far of a distance and got the rear view camera, so not too worried about it. But it is quite a beautiful campsite. Not the best weather, but also could be a lot worse. And it looks like this might be where the van bottomed out on this rock right here. Maybe I'll go ahead and throw that out of there before I drive back or just kind of angle the wheel up on this side a little bit so it's not deep down in that rut. But anyways. <laughs> Oh my God, a mosquito just flew into my throat. I think it might be in my lungs right now flying around. I don't know if it came out either. That's kind of disgusting. But also the water here is pretty, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's actually pretty deep. Maybe I'll come jump in here for a swim tomorrow morning. Get a little cold shock on the body. Also, somebody in the comments, you're gonna need to confirm this for me because I'm not 100% sure I'm not an animal poop expert. But that right there definitely looks like a trail, a game trail of some sort that something has used multiple times to come in and out of. And there is some animal waste there, I think. It looks like wolf, maybe coyote. It looks a little bit big for a coyote. I also don't know if coyotes are up here, but maybe a wolf. Someone let me know. What kind of animal dung does that look like to you? All right, I think those are just about done. They look so good. I haven't had a pizza in so long. Oh my God, that is beautiful. Yeah, these look way better than my last pizzas did. So that's good. But let these sit up here and cool off for a little bit and then we're hitting them with our final toppings and uh, we're finally eating dinner. So I don't have all the toppings that I would normally like on my pizza, but I do have my top two. Hot honey, ranch dressing. Ideally I'd have goat cheese and then some balsamic vinaigrette, but we don't have those. So we'll set it for these. Pizza numero uno. Hit it with some ranch. Nice little ranch swirl on there. And then some hot honey. Boom. And that is a beautiful looking pizza. There we go. Honestly, I might have to move my spot tonight back to uh, kind of out there more in that field because my Starlink is crapping the bed right now, trying to get connected and I need to get connected tonight so that I can upload my videos. So if this doesn't stabilize in time, I might just have to move later, but that's not really that big of a deal. We've got like an hour before the sunset, so if we need to do that, I'll just do that after I eat my pizza. To keep you guys kind of updated on where I'm at in the trip, we have driven, according to this here map, we went to the Lyard River Hot Springs Provincial Park earlier today right here. We drove up here, we kind of came through into the Yukon, went back down into British Columbia, came through into the Yukon, and now we are up here right before we go back down into British Columbia before coming back up into the Yukon for the final time. And then tomorrow we're gonna be making our way up to Whitehorse and then on through there. And Whitehorse is the last town and also the biggest town on this entire trip. They're actually big enough to have Walmart. So we've got about 14 hours of driving left total in our trip from here up to Fairbanks. But the trip doesn't stop there because from Fairbanks, we are driving 11 hours from Fairbanks up to Prudhoe Bay, which if you aren't familiar, that is the Dalton Highway, which is a 60% unpaved dirt highway where there's only three gas stations on the entire highway. And there's a point where if you drive too far from one gas station, that's kind of the point of no return. You don't have enough gas to get back. So you just got to keep going forward to the next station. It's a very scary, very daunting road. It takes you almost all the way up to the Arctic Ocean, it takes you well past the Arctic Circle. And I'm very nervous to drive that highway, but also very 
excited. And then from there, we're driving basically from the top of Alaska back through Fairbanks all the way to the bottom to Anchorage, Alaska. So we're going to be seeing the whole state, which is something that I'm very excited about because I have dreamed of going to Alaska since I was in high school. So this is a big trip for me and I'm very glad I get to share it with you guys. But anyways, this pizza is a hundred times better than my last pizza that I made. The crust is perfect. It could be cooked a little better, but I can only do so much with the oven that I have. The last one, my crust was way too thick. It didn't taste very good. This one, the crust tastes good. It's nice and thin, and it's just overall a better tasting pizza. And that's really all that matters. That's the name of the game. As long as you learn from your mistakes and continue to get better, nothing else matters. Delicious. All right, pizza is done, and I've made the executive decision that I am, in fact, going to take the Starlink down and move because it is just not connecting. And I think it's because this massive tree is blocking the signal somehow, so... I'm gonna move back to that open field and I will check in with you once we get there. So I just pulled the Starlink off the roof. It's sitting back there. Now we gotta back all the way out of here. I'm trying to keep my wheels more towards the uh, middle so I don't bottom out going backwards through that rut again. Well, we made it past the part that I bottomed out last time. So I should be able to just back out straight from here. God, it is nerve wracking though, being this close to the river trying to back up. I guess we'll just take this spot right here. This is going to be our new spot, so we're just kind of up here at the uh, opposite end. We were down there. Hopefully I have a nice unobstructed view of the sky where my Starlink can connect for me. All right, so back here the network has actually stabilized, so that's really good, but just killed a mosquito that apparently had already taken his fill of my blood. I gotta wash that off. Anyways, it is getting late. I know it doesn't look like it outside because... We're getting more north and the sun is going to stop getting lower in the sky, but I think it's supposed to rain all night long and it is currently 11 o'clock, so I need to get some work done, so I'm going to get in bed and work on my laptop for about an hour and then fall asleep and wake up and hit the road again, so as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel, and I will catch you guys next time. Yeah.